every function can be expressed by graphing out its points, which is something that we're probably already used to by now. However, we can also learn quite a bit about functions just by discussing its domain and range. So, in this video, we're going to explore more about what the domain and range of a function are and find the significance of both of them. So, before we begin this topic, I want to emphasize that if you don't know the classification of numbers, such as natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers, then we invite you to watch our classification of numbers video first before continuing on with this one. Otherwise, let's get straight to it. All right. The domain of a function refers to all the possible x values that a function can take on. That will yield a real y value. So, what do we mean by this? Well, let's start with an example of a linear function. Now, notice how this graph has arrows drawn on it. And why? Because we can't quite draw this line in a way that extends forever. So we draw the arrows to denote that it's supposed to continue on and on. The graph certainly does not stop at these points because we can input any number that's ridiculously large or small, and there will still be a multiplication of two and a subtraction of three applied to it to arrive upon a Y value that is real. So, let's continue to think about what kind of number can be put into x. Would there be anything wrong with putting in a fraction into x? Definitely not. Putting in half would end up giving us 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. This is clearly a valid point on the graph, so we know that x is not limited to only integers. So then, is x limited to only rational numbers? Or can we put in an irrational number and get a real number as our output? Well, we certainly can. If we plug in pi for x, we would get 2 times pi minus 3, which will yield an irrational number that is roughly 3.283. Of course, the digits and decimals just go on and on actually but we can still roughly plot that out onto the graph right about here. Notice how the continuous line just goes right through this point. In fact, since it's continuous, you can imagine how many rational numbers and irrational numbers the function went through, even just within this small segment that we can't even account for. So, since the x value can be inputted as both rational numbers or irrational numbers, we can say that the x value can be any real number. Good. So we've got ourselves a start to something called set builder notation for our domain. In an effort to say that x can be any real number, we can write this. So let's just read this to make sense of it in English. These braces basically mean the set of. So the set of all x values such that x is an element, which we can actually shorten by representing with this symbol here, of all real numbers. And there it is. So to say something is an element of a real number, is the same as saying that the number belongs to the category of real numbers. So what this is basically saying is that our domain or all possible x values can be any number that is within the category of real numbers. Great. So you'll notice that as we plug in a larger x value, we also get a larger y value. And as we plug in a smaller x value, we get a smaller y value as well. This brings us to the concept of range, since just as x can be any rational number and irrational number, making it any real number, our y, or shall I say 
our range in this case can also be any real number as well. To express this in set notation once again, we can write it like so, which stands for the set of all y values such that y is an element of all real numbers. So it seems like for this linear function that there wasn't much limitation on what x can be and what y can be. But let's look at some more interesting scenarios so that we can get a good grasp of the different situations that we might see for both the domain and range. Let's take a look at this graph here. It is just a vertical line. The equation for this line is x equals 4, since regardless of what the y values are, the x is always going to be set at a value of 4. So in a situation like this, we cannot just write that our domain is a set of all x values such that x is an element of all real numbers. And why is this the case? Because notice here that it says an element of all real numbers. Well, if we look at the graph here, we see that x is only equal to 4. By saying all real numbers, we would be implying 5 or 6.5 or even pi. But none of these can be plugged into this graph because this graph only has 4 as its domain. Therefore, we would instead write that our domain is a set of all x values such that x is equal to 4. Fairly simple, right? Oh, and what would the range be? Well, Notice how the range of this graph, or shall I say the y values, regardlessly continue to get larger or smaller. So the range can be any number. Therefore, for the range, we can just write that it is in fact the set of all y values, such that y is an element of all real numbers. On a side note though, if we wanted to be more specific with the domain here, we could actually add in the part where we mention that it is a set of all real numbers, since we would just be specifying the classification of it. But by further writing that x is only equal to 4, we are including a restriction within the classification. Therefore, this would read, the set of all x values such that x is an element of all real numbers, where x is equal to 4. Awesome! So, let's go ahead and try another example. What about a parabola? Well, here's the equation for this graph. First of all, notice how if we looked exclusively at the x values for this graph, the x can be any number from left to right. This makes sense since there would be nothing wrong with squaring any x value that we plug in. Even 0 can be squared since it would just be 0. So our domain for this equation would be the set of all x values such that x is an element of all real numbers. Now what about our range? Well, here we have a more interesting case. Notice how our graph never goes below zero, no matter what x value it is. In light of this, if we look at the equation, we realize that squaring any number would never result in a negative number, except for zero, which is neither a positive or negative number. But we do know that our range at some point goes through every positive values, such as integers like 1, 2, 3, and irrational numbers such as pi. So, between these two options, which one would be the correct way to write the notation for the range here? Well, this one would be the correct answer. And although the first option might seem correct at a glance, it is not quite accurate. The second half of both options show that y is greater or equal to 0. And this is correct since the equation never yields any negative value no matter what x value we input. 
So these parts of the two notations are correct in their restrictions. The reason the first option is incorrect though is due to the first segment here. This is because if we recall, this notation denotes integers. This part reads y is an element of all integers. By limiting the y to only integers, we are excluding, for example, any irrational numbers that the equation could possibly graph, which would be totally incorrect since, like we mentioned, this graph does go through irrational numbers, such as pi. Therefore, the second option is the correct answer, because y is the element of all real numbers instead. Great! Now, what might be a situation where we don't have real numbers being used in our domain or range? Because it seems to be the case that a lot of graphs do in fact use real numbers in their domain and range set notation. Well, let's take a look at this graph. Noticing that this graph is not continuous like a line, we would know right away that we are definitely not going to have real numbers in our domain and range set notation. Perhaps the graph is expressing a virtual reality simulation game. Let's say this game works in a way where the player finds himself or herself in a room, and the room is however large that it needs to be. There are always a number of people in the room, and the person must write in the number of people generated. In light of the domain, how many people can the virtual reality game serve out? Well, it can generate zero people, one person, two, three, and so on, perhaps even a thousand, but definitely not half of a person, nor can the game generate a negative number of people. So we already have somewhat of a feel for the domain. All right, well, one way to write the domain would be the following. The domain is a set of all x values, such that x is an element of all whole numbers. And this is because, if we can recall, whole numbers are a set of numbers that start from zero and go on to positive infinity, not including any decimal numbers or fractions. So that would make sense for a domain here. However, it is a bit uncommon to write the domain as a set of whole numbers, as people tend to use integers with some restrictions to describe the set in situations like this. And like we already know, integers include all the positive numbers from zero, as well as the negative numbers. So we would have to restrict all of them by including this part of the statement here where x is greater than or equal to zero. So this is an example of a situation where we didn't use real numbers in our domain to describe it. Because if we had, we would be implying that the game would sometimes serve out a randomly weird number of people, like 2.1257 people, which certainly would not make sense. Now, what could we write for our range then? Well the minimum number of people the computer serves out is zero. And if there are no other people in the room, then only that one player would be in the room. This means that the smallest possible range is one, since one person is always in the room. If the computer generates one person, then there are two people in the room, including the player. So on and so forth. Again, since the computer never serves 0.5 people in the room, we can never get a fraction or a decimal like 1.5 as part of our range either, or shall I say, as part of our output. So since we're talking about numbers starting from one that would go on to positive two, three, four, and so on, excluding fractions and decimals, what kind of number category would be fitting for this? Well, isn't it basically the natural numbers? Good! So we can write our range as the range is the set of all y values such that y is an element 
of all natural numbers. But remember, like we mentioned earlier, some people tend to like writing it as the classification of integers with some restrictions to it. So instead, we could write y is an element of all integers where y is greater than or equal to 1. So there it is, the domain and range for this example. Awesome. Getting the hang of domain and range? Good. So again, domain and range helps us to think about restrictions within our graph. We can expect smooth lines that are continuous when we see real numbers. Or we can expect graphs to abruptly stop and not go past a certain point if we see extra conditions such as greater than or less than, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to signs. So that was a long lesson. But this is a very important concept that keeps recurring straight into university. So, whereas some students never quite learn this well, we encourage you to learn this as thoroughly as possible. Well, thanks for sticking through with us. Until next time, have a good one.